Would you like to flash your BIOS fast or intact? It's no mystery at this point that Intel's coming out with the 9900K and other CPUs, and so Z390 motherboards are coming with that. We have the Gigabyte Z390 Master in front of us. We have the ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate. We've got the MSI, completely changed brand in here, Meg Z390 Godlike. Talk about that more later. And uh, the Gigabyte one is the one we're going to look at today. So this isn't a review. It's not a PCB analysis. We're getting to that, though. Buildzoid has all the data he needs. What we're looking at right now is the BIOS. And the reason we're looking at this is because Gigabyte has routinely had one of the worst BIOS in just anything, integrations that we've had to work with over the past few years. And ASUS is clearly a market leader in their BIOS capabilities, like what you can achieve with it in overclocking. MSI has gotten way better for usability. Gigabyte's kind of been stuck, but they've completely rebuilt it for this series. And so that's what we're going to look at and see, is it actually better? Because I know a lot of you have had the same question. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut Liquid Metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. First of all, for this board, we'll talk a little bit about the hardware, but not much. There's an actual finned heatsink on there, so I'm really happy about that. Haven't tested it yet, don't know if it's any good. We'll test VRM thermals soon enough. But Gigabyte did this for X470 as well, and they were like the only motherboard manufacturer to get the memo and start doing finned heatsinks again. So really cool to see that in the very least. They still have the covers on top of it, so marketing still gets what they want which is for the heat sink to be completely obstructed by things. But uh, it looks like engineering and tactical marketing have successfully managed to get fins under the obstructions. So there's still more surface area, even though there's not a lot of airflow from the top. But that's OK, because we can still get some air in through the inner rim of it and through the outside. So significantly better than previously, and marketing still gets what they want. But uh, we're here to talk more about BIOS today. So let's take a look at that. So this is the new BIOS. I am going to be learning this with you today and criticizing it and complimenting it live as I see it for the first time as well, so you can learn it with me. This is, I guess, considered easy mode. Where's hard mode? This is easy mode. We have classic mode, F2. What's that? OK, it looks like the old one. So here's the old BIOS, basically in a wrapper. It's got a bit of a UI change around the outer edges. but. Uh, where, where's hard mode? Where's advanced mode? Normally there's an advanced mode with the easy mode, but I guess it's just classic. We'll look through it more, but I think it's just classic mode. So this is the only one we actually care about. Let's look at this. So for some of the complaints I had, I've always disliked the smart fan settings option in Gigabyte's BIOS. That's disappointing. That's the same. So this is, the reason I didn't like this is because it's a separate pop-up and uh, none of the hotkeys work on this screen specifically. So smart fan. I would like to be able to get into BIOS, set my fan speeds to like full, for example. And then I, I do like this feature a lot, apply to all. I really like that. So they've, they've always had that, though. And then I want to be able to hit F10 and save and exit. But none of the hotkeys work here. So Gigabyte does this a lot, where they have all these weird pop-ups within. So it's, it's like Windows within Windows within Windows. Uh, and it's unnecessary levels of complexity. But so I guess this is the new advanced mode. Let's get into the advanced frequency settings. This is where most of the action happens for overclocking on Gigabyte's boards. Base clock is standard, typically 100. And it looks like if you hit Enter on this, it pops up just a list of every number in the world between 80 and whatever the max is, whatever their max is. So kind of interesting choice there. Uh, of course, you should just type in the number you want. But BCLK, uh, slice ratios for graphics. No one really uses these, but it's nice to have the option, I suppose. CPU upgrades should probably be a lookup table for pre-overclocks that they've set. And what I would like to see is if I open this and I select one, I want to see reflected in BIOS what it's changing. So I want to see that number turn into 48 right now. If, it's, if what 4.8 does is change the clock ratio to 4, 48, then I want to see that number reflected when I enter the pre-overclock setting. And likewise, I would like to see in the Voltage tab, uh, I would like to see what they're trying to set for that. So we still have like current setting over here. I want to know what's there uh, for the, the new 
option we just chose. So that's something I'd like to see changed for this BIOS. I guess it's, it's not off to the best start. Uh, we already know the fan settings haven't really changed how they work, so that's not different. The advanced core options probably be where we look next. I, I would love to have, so here's what I'd like, Gigabyte, if you're, if you're watching this, uh, here's what I would like to see. What Gigabyte really needs to get away from is having 10,000 menus within menus and having like pop-ups of numbers between 80 and 500 with a significant figure accuracy of two decimal points. Like it's just not, it's, this is just unnecessarily difficult to navigate. Even though it's apparently been upgraded, I'm st I still see a lot of the, the problems I've had. So like this page, this page should have, if you're looking at CPU overclocking, core clocks, things like that, just, just uh, multipliers is the word I'm looking for. If you're looking at just multipliers, I shouldn't have to go into a sub-menu called Advanced CPU Core Settings and then navigate to the cores here under the Intel Turbo Boost technology section, which is kind of confusing, I think, for uh, most likely anyone who's not worked with a Gigabyte board before or is used to other boards. What I want to see is for CPU clock ratio, it should just have sub-options under it where you can set uh, 48x for cores 1 and 2 and 47x for cores three through whatever. So th that's, a, that's a problem I have with Gigabyte BIOS. Too many menus within menus. It looks like that hasn't changed yet, but we'll keep looking through it and see what they've improved. So uh, yeah, I'd really, I'd love to see the CPU overclocking page simplified. And I don't know, I like, it's hard to say. It's, I think it's hard to make a lot of changes that would really make a lot of sense without looking like they're copying ASUS because ASUS just does it so well, but I'm, I'm positive that there is a better way to do it that is not a copy of ASUS without having menus within menus, because uh, this is just unnavigable or for, I, I think, you know, UI Design 101, as few clicks as possible is the rule. So anyway, turbo ratios, if you want to adjust them individually, they're all in here. It is kind of nice, though. I will say that Gigabyte shows you the stock uh, just in their, this is their, uh, their previous or current settings listing over here. So I like that we can see the stock uh, turbo ratios that Intel provisions um, for the per core sets. And then for the power package power limits, this is another thing that I think could be improved. So if I type a huge number in the power limit because I want to remove the power limitations on Gigabyte's board for overclocking, I type 9999999 and it goes to auto. What I want, it to see, want to see it go to is the biggest number there is, which in this case is 4090, which you can find out by hitting enter, which then goes through evidently about 4,000 uh, numbers one by one, which also seems kind of weird, but it's a quick way to find out what the max is, I guess. So I'll take that where I can get it. Another thing I'd like to see is a, where's LLC? Do they have LLC in here this time? So this is good. Core current limit's good. That's not changed though. They've had that for a while now. Number of cores enabled is good. This is something, so here's the thing. All of this stuff, these are power settings and they are power settings that relate to the CPU for the most part, but there's like DRAM power settings in here too. There's C state settings. There's uh, speed shift mixed with hyper threading, mixed with number of cores enabled, mixed with per core overclocking. Half of that stuff should be in a different tab, like all of the power settings in here. So we've got, let's see, package power limit, CPU current limit, uh, C states, all of that stuff, package C state limit, all of those power settings, energy efficient turbo, what is that? That's as well, probably should move, but. Uh, all of these settings, I think, like the power settings, should be moved into, I don't know, how about like voltage and power settings or something. Something that makes more sense. I, look at this. Like, so it's top menu. You have this menu here. MIT, I don't know what that stands for. I never have. But you have MIT, which is all I know is this is the overclocking tab. That's the only place I care about. So we have that menu. Then you have all these other ones, which are pretty standard stuff. Uh, and then the MIT menu has within it menus and it has no top level options. Like when I, as few clicks as possible guys. So the, the, when I load this page, I should see clock, I should see ratios, I should see base clock, I should see uh, V core, all of the, the 
critical stuff to overclock and should be here. If you want to bury more advanced settings like current limitations, power limitations, things like that, put them in an advanced power and voltage tab like this. But then this goes to more submenus. And so, okay, let's go here. So it's going to take me several clicks. And it's not like it's a huge amount of time. I'm, I don't want to exaggerate it, but it'll take me several clicks to find what I want. And while that is not a big deal, you know, maybe I'm spending 10 minutes looking for all the settings I want instead of three. Uh, that the, and then after that, you learn where they are. At the end of the day, you're going to overlook things and, and forget about stuff because it's not all in front of you. So I'd really like to see the most important stuff for just a basic overclock. I'm not even talking advanced stuff here. So I'm not talking about like what we were doing for the Rip J, Rip LTT stream. I'm not talking about what Build Zoid and Dare Bauer do. I'm talking about I want the ratios on a per core level or sync all cores, whatever you want to call it, if you don't want to use ACS terminology, talking to Gigabyte. That should be in the top page for whatever MIT is. And I'd like to see vCore there. I'd like to see um, probably definitely per core overclocking, vCore, base clock, and uh, probably XMP toggles should be in there. So memory, basic memory settings should it be auto, should it be XMP. And then after that, you have a timings page. And you let people who want to play with timings do that, because that's a, that's a special group of people who want to do that. That should be buried, I agree. But to not have at least just like XMP on or off in here seems like a, a wasted amount of clicks. Because if there's one thing that I think a lot of new builders will overlook, and Gigabyte's clearly trying to appeal to new builders to some extent, because they've revised the easy mode BIOS, if there's one thing new builders will overlook. It's that their memory isn't going to run at just the speed that it says it runs at, unless they go and tell it to do that in BIOS uh, because of how JEDEC and the boards work together. So yeah, XMP should be on this page, core ratios, base clock. And I think also, well, we'll leave, we'll leave most of that there. Uh, all of the power offsets should be moved to an easier to access page. AVX offset should probably be on the main page as well. I think that covers us for that one. Uh, another thing I do like, though, so this is something I, I noticed earlier when playing around with this. The BIOS now says what's changed. So uh, this is something I wanted for so long from Gigabyte. And ASUS does it. Um, ASUS doesn't make the best things in the world either. They certainly have flaws. But if there's one thing they, they do actually really well, it is genuinely BIOS. And uh, just from an ease of use standpoint. So Gigabyte is now reporting what you've changed before it reboots, which is great. That's what I want to see, because I want to know what's changed in case there's a lot of stuff in here, and it's all buried. So if you're going to bury stuff, at least tell me what I changed. That way, if I accidentally change something, I know it, uh, rather than having to dig for it later. So this is good. I like this. The job well done, Gigabyte, for adding some stuff like that. So they've starred a few things here, I'm just noticing. And let's. Let's go back to easy mode and see if there's any correlation there. Favorites, F11, OK. So here's favorites. And this is something we've seen on boards in the past. It's not, well, I don't know. I'm not sure actually if Gigabyte's old BIOS has this or not. But uh, it's good that they pre start a bunch of the, the stuff I'm asking for. So now we're getting closer to what I want here. So this, this should, like, it's cool that it's in favorites. That's cool. That's useful. Uh, it's great for usability and human factors. But this stuff should also, most of it anyway, not all of it. Like, really, we don't need VTD, ERP, secure boot mode. We don't need these things in favorites. But it, it'd be nice to have some of these options, like ratio and vCore and memory multiplier, maybe, or just XMP, in MIT natively without having to go to favorites. So that's something that it seems like they kind of have the right idea, but they're on implementation. I want to go back to advanced mode. That's only, really the only thing I care about right now. Uh, so I already complained about this, menus within menus. And once we get into the menus, we can see there is load line calibration. This isn't new. Gigabyte's kind of had this. Um, the pop-up's nice this time, I guess. Uh, I don't really like pop-ups typically. But when you're going to use words to define your levels of things, like how am I supposed to know to type in ultra extreme, I, don't, I wouldn't come up with that. So having the, uh, the pop-up is good. What if I type in a number, though? Does it, OK, numbers correlate it. That's good, too. So that's good to see. Good human factors there. Uh, zero, does that go to auto? Zero should go to auto, but it goes to standards. I guess we'll take that. Oh, wait, that doesn't make sense. Zero goes to standard. What the hell? What's normal? Why is there normal and standard? Normal, standard, low. OK, so uh, what I'm looking at right now is the bottom left, what's changing when I do this. 
And we can see that they're mostly changing, except normal and standard appear to be the same thing, at least visually. Maybe they're not. I, haven't, I've, I never use these. I only use extreme <laughs> or high. So I don't know. You can use plus and minus to adjust. That's good. Well, you can use minus to adjust. You can use plus to adjust on numpad. OK, good enough. Uh, anything else here we care about? Current protection. This is something that is a bit nebulous for me. So here's this is a complaint I've had for Gigabyte for a while now. I don't know what these mean. I, I mean, obviously, I do now. But when you look at it the first time, you have vCore over current protection. All I know is I want it off. I don't care if it's on normal or high or extreme. I want it gone. And so vCore current protection, does extreme mean it is extremely protected? Or does it mean it's extremely unprotected? Like it, it allows it to go extremely high or it's extremely protected? That's unclear. So I'd like to see the language improved on that. Uh, you should probably just use, honestly, like off and, and on and sort of on or something. Uh, or if you're going to do like current, I mean, that's, that's just the number, just a current, actual current number. Uh, anything else? CPU vCore, PWM switch rate. OK, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So let's look at this tab. This is a very important tab. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that should be moved into here. They should call it voltage and power or something like that. But CPU vCore, they've got starred. Looks like we'll look at the stock voltage for the actual new CPUs later once they're out. But they have a, an enter list again. I don't find these particularly useful. I also find the words normal and auto to be very confusing. I don't know what that means. I don't like. I could find out, but uh, <laughs> to me, normal and auto mean the same thing, and that's that the user hasn't controlled it. So, a bit nebulous on the language. Uh, I don't find these lists particularly useful, but I guess if you're going to do something on an enter action, it's not the worst thing to do. And maybe from a human factors usability standpoint for a new user, they might look at this and maybe come to, to the realization that they should only really be increasing voltage about these steps rather than typing in much larger numbers without knowing that what they're doing or something. So maybe that has some use there. Let's read some of the text here. Adjust the CPU vCore voltage. Auto equals BIOS automatically configures the setting. vCore voltages can be entered manually. Note, extreme overclock configurations may need a higher vCore voltage, which may incur higher temperature. So I mean, that's good. That's good that they warn you about temperature uh, from a, a new user standpoint. But they define auto. What is normal? Anyway, uh, BCLK adaptive voltage, OK. Enable or disable that. Uh, or go into auto. What is auto? Does it tell us? Enable disabled BCLK adaptive voltage. When this feature is enabled and when BCLK OC, there's no need to override voltages in order to boot at a higher BCLK. So OK, so it tells you a bit. We'll get the correct voltages automatically. Uh, this is something that Gigabyte's been guilty of for a long time, though. They always have auto enabled, disabled for stuff like MCE or for like this. And just just, just enabled or disabled. If the, if the functionality is switching, then auto is OK. If the functionality is non-switching, and it's always going to be enabled or disabled permanently until you boot into BIOS, then only have these two options. It should more or less be Boolean at this point. So um, that's just a small gripe. CPU, VCCIO, OK, all this is fine. SA, IO voltages, that's good to have exposure to in the same spot as vCore, so I appreciate that. And not much else is different there. Chipset voltage control, this is weird too. So this, this, this gigabyte, this is what I'm talking about. Our menu is MIT, advanced voltage settings, chipset voltage control, and there's one option. Why? What's, what is the point of this? Just, just put it somewhere else. Literally anywhere else is fine. No one changes that anyway. And if they do, it can go somewhere else. Uh, DRAM voltage control, OK. DRAM voltage, OK, 1.2, channel AB. Uh, OK, this seems fine. Um, they, they could add a few things here, but we'll let Buildzoid talk about that later. Internal VR control, OK, so this is for the fiber, I guess. Maybe for the voltage regulator, I'm guessing, not virtual reality. <laughs> uh, yes, it is for the, it looks like it's for the VRM, the, the fiber. So we have the graphics fiber, and uh, we have current limits. That's good. That's good to see. I mean, this isn't really something that I typically use, but 
Good to have the current limits broken out individually. Let's do this. It's been telling me to push Alt and to the left for a while now. Uh, or Alt moves it to the left, okay. So just Alt, not left. This is something that I've never found particularly useful. It's not new either. This has been in Gigabyte's BIOS. All that's new here is they've changed the skin. So I'm not really 100% clear on why this is such a big deal. But uh, the skin's different. So I don't know. Like, here's the thing. You could do this. And I guess it's dynamic, so maybe there's something to that. Or you could put all this stuff on this page, which currently has nothing on it except for menus. So if, if you're having, if you have a menu which is then full of menus, you have to start doing screwy stuff like putting in more menus off to the side that are accessed by an Alt key. So I, I find this to be useful information that is in the wrong spot, and I think that should move. Uh, system. Okay, this is all standard. We don't need to worry about that. And this is BIOS version F5i, if you didn't see that. So next one, BIOS. Uh, what do we have here? Security options. OK, that's fine. Quick boot options. Boot options. This is all standard stuff. No complaints here. That tab makes sense. Peripherals looks pretty normal as well. I don't see PCIe options in here, i.e. switching to Gen 2 instead of Gen 3 to artificially limit the lanes. That would be kind of nice. Maybe it's in the chipset options. Nope. These kind of belong together, I think. Peripherals and chipset. Um, I, I feel like you could limit some of the submenus here. And power, which for, again, we have like actual power options that are more at a motherboard level, uh, system boot level, and then we have the power options and voltage options that are at the CPU overclocking level. Uh, so maybe some, some clarification of language would be good for that. Uh, ACPI or something. And I think that covers all that stuff. So that's that's most of that. PC health status, this is like more stuff that could just kind of be at a top level menu somewhere. And like if you're not going to put overclocking options here and you're just, you're just going to put menus, at least have like the health status or the alt menu just all listed here natively because that, that would at least get use of the menu. Miscellaneous, max link speed, auto, okay. That's actually what I was asking for a minute ago. So they do have that. That's good. And I don't think that's new either. 3 mark enhancement's not new either. Favorites, OK. Smart fan, we saw that. It's the same. It's fine. Let's switch back to easy mode. So here's where you get all the readouts that are in odd places within the actual BIOS. This is the much less useful BIOS. Maybe, I don't know, very new builders might like it. It looks pretty from a marketing standpoint, but uh, we've never liked these. Every company makes one to some extent. It's just they're not they're not particularly useful. I mean, at least we have that's kind of weird. You hit enter and it just changes the profile. But uh, at least you have access to that's that's weird though. DRAM status. So my select is on DRAM status and hitting enter, which is really not clear at all. Even though I just stumbled into it, changes this thing down here, which looks like a different option. So XMP enable disable. That should just be like X, XMP or something. Uh, boot sequence, that's good to have. Smart fan, again, it's a pop-up, but at least this I like. I like that they have this accessible in the easy menu, because that's probably the one thing that everyone wants to change is the fan speeds, the DRAM, the DRAM excuse me, uh, speeds and stuff like that. And I think for the rest of the easy mode, I don't know. I, I don't have any serious complaints. I, I find it not particularly useful for myself, but I can see it being useful for beginners, and that's fine. That's what they're going for. So that's Gigabyte's new BIOS. It's it's the old BIOS with uh, more orange and less red, and it's got the easy mode now. So I don't know. I've <laughs> it's there are a lot of things that could be improved in Gigabyte's BIOS. It's not terrible. Like here's the thing: Gigabyte makes some really good boards these days, at the high end especially. So they they have hardware that's perfectly fine. Some of the Gaming Seven, Gaming Nine series, which I think that branding's going away now. Unfortunately, I really liked it, but. Uh, it's going away after everyone else did the same thing. Don't know who copied who, but MSI also had gaming 357, whatever. And I guess Intel kind of started anyway. So branding's changing, but previous gaming 7 and 9 motherboards have been pretty good on the hardware level. BIOS has always been weak for Gigabyte. It's usable. You can get what you want. It's just not the most advanced and powerful BIOS in the world. It's kind of difficult to navigate, and it's, it's slow to work with just from a human use case scenario, not in terms of loading or things like that. Uh, I actually didn't try moving the mouse. Did they fix the mouse? I don't know if there's been any changes to the mouse behavior, but it seems OK. We've had previous Gigabyte BIOSes 
where the mouse would move on an XY grid, and that was infuriating, even though you really shouldn't be using a mouse in BIOS anyway. But if you're going to have it at least work, it looks fine here. So no complaints about the mouse movement this time. But yeah, um, a lot can be improved. Nothing's really changed in a significant way for the advanced mode BIOS, which for whatever reason is called classic mode. That's also confusing. Because I get to this page, I see easy mode. I'm like, OK, I don't want that. Where's advanced mode? Well, I guess my only other option is classic. I don't want that either, because I know what that is, and I didn't like it. So I don't know. There's a lot that could be clarified here. And Gigabyte has a lot of work cut out for them. The board, I want to be clear. We haven't, but we haven't reviewed the board. We haven't benchmarked it. It could be perfectly good on a hardware level. This is, you can survive this. You can work with this. It's not a big deal if the BIOS is annoying to work with as long as it has the features it needs. And for most people, it does. So they're fine there. And as long as the VRM is good, and we're going to look at that, but it seems fine. And it's got a real heat sink on the VRM, so I really like that. Good job, Gigabyte, on, on pushing for real heat sinks on motherboards again. Seriously, if you, if you have a chance to praise Gigabyte for anything they've done, it's that heat sink, because I'd like to see other companies follow suit. And uh, giving them credit where it's due there is, is definitely, I mean, they deserve that. So job well done on a lot of the stuff. The PCH heat sink cover thing. It's kind of interesting with the way the LEDs are laid out. Not really a thing I talk about much, but I do like their implementation. So like on a hardware level, it seems like this is, is an OK product, and we'll review it later. It's just that I, I want to be clear on the BIOS level, there's a lot that can be improved. And uh, this is Gigabyte's biggest weakness is their BIOS, where ASUS, it's their biggest strength, because price kind of starts deigning ASUS a bit at the high end. So. Uh, that's it for this one, though. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamers and access out directly. And we'll have more of these Z390 videos on the channel soon with the new Intel CPU launches as well. And store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. The Graph logo shirt is what I have on or one of our mod mats. I'll see you all next time.